Welcome. God bless you. I hope you're all doing well. It's so good to be with you. 2024 has begun. In fact, we're our second week into 2024. As I was thinking about time, that limited resource we have, it seems like this time last year, 2023, was but yesterday. Uh, just a reminder of how quickly time goes by. It's the great equalizer of all mankind. I don't care if you're rich, poor, white, black, young, old, male, female, educated, illiterate, it doesn't matter. The great equalizer is we live a 24-hour day. In fact, this day, this sermon will never be lived again. It will be recorded in time. And time moves on. One of my favorite expressions as I read the, the Bible, and it came to pass. And I thought, There's an understatement. Just moment by moment, those are put into history. And here we are in 2024. We want to make the most of this time. It's a precious gift that God has given us. I remember one time hearing a, a statement. I wrote it down. It said, we're too soon old and too late smart. And I hope that's not going to be the case, but I feel like that sometimes as an old man. Um, too soon. It just happened so soon. But nonetheless, let's take off. It's going to lead us to our... A good introduction to our, uh, I'm going to do a little mini-series, a three-part three part series uh, on looking unto Jesus from the text in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the originator and the perfecter, some translations say, of our faith. Every man lives by faith, no matter who it is, every man lives by faith. The only difference is the object of our faith. For Christians, Christ Jesus is the object of our faith, so we're looking unto Jesus. And that's going to be our theme for this real brief, uh, it's going to be our focus for this brief little series. First of all, I want to consider looking at, looking unto Jesus from a young person or from your youth, okay? Let me give you a verse that would encourage us to think along those lines. And, and the, if I could title this message, it would be, Don't Waste Your Youth. Uh, and try to put that in some kind of a time frame of our life. If you get to live to be old, you look back at your youth. I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. But in Psalm 71, in verse 5, it says, For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust, from my youth, my youth up. He says, I, I've been trusting you from my youth. In that same chapter, he says in verse 17, O oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth. God, the teacher. Um, we pray for all of our children to be taught of the Lord. And great will be the peace of our children. There's a psalm and I, uh, a prayer in Isaiah that we just pray for our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. O oh God, Thou hast taught me from my youth up, and hitherto have I declared Thy wondrous works. Now also, the next verse says, Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not until I have shown Thy strength to this generation and Thy power to everyone that is to come. Those are key verses for Joyce and I. When we were young, and it goes by so quickly, and now you're old. God, I don't want to be set on the shelf. I want to talk to the younger generation and speak into their lives when I have opportunity. And old age uh, provides that and permits that. So we want to look at looking unto Jesus from youth, and then we'll take a, the next message to be when you're in your prime, whatever that time period is. When you're not a kid anymore, you're not young, and... Age seems so relative in so many ways. You may be 20 years old, you're still young. When you're 10 years old, you look at somebody 15 and think, boy, they're so old. When you're 15, you look at somebody 20 and say, wow, they're old. You know, they may be married or have a job or in college or whatever it might be. And you look at them and you... But when you're my age, you look at somebody 25 and realize how young they are. You're still in youth at 25. So... It's hard to say, from this day to this age, you're young. No. And from this age to this age, you're midlife, you're in your prime, or whatever you want. And then, I think you can safely say, once you hit 70, you're old. 
you may be young old, but you're old. Uh, the days of man's years are three score and ten, of our reason of strength, four score. Anything after 70, Joyce and I have just realized that these are bonus years. These are just additional blessings of the Lord. And life is not to see how long you can live, but to live however long, whatever that time, the number of days God gives us, what time he gives us to get to know God, to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So we're going to take a look at this message, don't waste your youth. The next message will be when you're in your prime. And then the next one will be old age. What does life look at? You think old age and kind of coast now and look back over your life and think, yeah, I'm living off yesterday's grace. And, oh, there are dangers you face in your older age you never did when you were younger or when you were in your prime. And if you want to finish well, and not, old, not all old people finish well, how do you do that? Looking unto Jesus. Drum roll that. Well, looking unto Jesus. Not just some abstract theological concept. I want us to ponder that. Looking unto Jesus. The writer of Hebrews makes that real clear. Unto Jesus. Jesus is not calling us to a religious teaching. God is not calling us to a religious teaching of any way. He's calling us to himself, to the person, a personal relationship with God himself through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus never called people to a teaching. He said, come follow me. As Jesus was speaking to the older group, the religious PhDs of his day, the Pharisees, scribes, they were all older than him, and he was telling them, trying to tell them who he was, their Messiah, and they were just resisting this so much. And Jesus said that Abraham, because they said, we have Abraham as our father, who are you to try to teach us something about God? And he said, Abraham knew him and rejoiced to see his day. And they said, you're not yet 30 years old. And have you seen Abraham? In those powerful words, he says, truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. That's the Jesus we want to look to. The preexistent, the incarnate God himself among us. He's saying, look to me, look unto Jesus. It's, the thing of it is, is, a person can look unto Jesus, know God, faith in God, from his youth up, very young, four, five, six-year-old child. It's hard to determine an age of accountability when people become conscious of their sin and they're not being right with God. And What do I ask the questions about life? What am I here for? What's the meaning of this thing? You can be a young child. Um... Jesus said to his disciples as they rebuked the children wanting to come near Jesus, and he was more than just a little upset with them. And he said, Permit the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he took them up in his arms, and he blessed them. These don't waste your youth. Well, I can say this. Don't sell children short. Don't sell young people short. Teenagers, 20s, don't, don't sell them short. These are people that can come to know God, can come to Jesus. My mother, oh, I'm so thankful for a godly mother. She was involved in child evangelism. She'd have good news clubs in our house. And some of those children would make professions of faith in Jesus, who he was, and receive him and, and receive the forgiveness. I think of one of them, um, the only one that came from his family uh, to the Good News Clubs, and he made a profession of faith. And he, as he grew older, he would go to church. Nobody else in the family would go to church. And then he became a witness and became involved in Bible clubs in high school and went on to put himself through Bible college, became a pastor, married a godly woman, had children that loved the Lord. He was the only one. As a child, from your youth up, he knew God. You don't have to live off somebody else's faith, somebody else's grace. The young man, while he was in his youth, he didn't waste his youth. When we were pastoring uh, a church, we had a brief period when I first left the department, felt called of God to preach, and I thought that meant pastor. We tried pastoring a small church 
not too far from where we lived, and we would in those days go out, knock on doors, give invitations to church, hand out tracts, share the gospel, what we could. And you know, one home allowed us to do that, and and they they weren't interested in coming to church, but they'd let us bring their young daughter to church. And sure enough, we'd pick her up, and if we couldn't pick her up, we'd have somebody pick her up from the church, and they'd let us, she just just down the road, half a mile from the church. Sometimes she'd ride her bike in the summer and just show up there. But only one in her family. And then finally we left the church to become itinerant ministers and another pastor came to we kind of lost track of her. But years later we met her, her husband, married a godly man. But she embraced this Lord Jesus, looking unto Jesus as a young person and stayed with it all through her life into adulthood, into having children. Don't sell those times short. Don't think that God can't do a mighty work in a person's life when they're young. In fact, when is the best time to get saved? I would always say, the earlier the better. To come to Jesus, get forgiveness of sins, and receive Christ as Savior, and stay after Him. I could go on with story after story of people that come to mind. The only ones in their home and family that would receive Christ and continue on. Don't waste your youth. If by, I'll make this comment. If you have the blessing, now I'm focusing, if you're a young person and listening to this, if you have the blessing of a Christian home, don't squander it. Don't take it for granted. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, and by the way, if you have godly parents, grandparents, take advantage of that. People who would leave influence in your life, Make the very most of it. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, here's what it says, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. This is a parent's responsibility. And as parents have tried to speak into children's life, they take them to church, they listen to Bible stories with them. They talk about Jesus. Listen to what it says. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. In other words, in the ordinary moments of life, if you have a home that lifts up the Lord Jesus, wow, take advantage of it. Don't take it for granted. Make the most of it. Too often times, people with that advantage almost feel like they're inoculated with the gospel truth. And too often, they squander it and waste it and walk away from the Lord. Don't do that. That's my encouragement. I think I can offer some counsel, being an older man, uh, and also offer some cautions, which I hope to do in this. Well, looking unto Jesus, how do you fix your what, What's some way I can focus upon this. How do, how do you look unto Jesus? I, th I want to leave us one point to focus upon as a young person. Focus on the gospel. Fix your eyes. Some of the translations, rather than say looking unto Jesus, they say, fix your gaze upon Jesus. Who is Jesus? What did he do? Fix your eyes upon the gospel. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. The peace of God that comes to the soul of a man as a child, I know God saves young children, and I've seen them stay with God right on throughout their life. I've also seen the opposite. They walk away. I'm saying, don't do that. Make the most of your youth. Things will happen as a young person that will be foundational for you throughout your life. Establish, strengthen, settle those areas. The gospel is, is one of them. Know what the gospel is. In Romans 5 and verse 6 it says this, For when you were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Boy, there's a lot of truth in this one. You didn't die for the righteous. You didn't come to call the righteous. You're self-righteous. You you don't see your need of Christ's death on the cross. But God, verse 8, Romans 5, 
But God commendeth his love toward us, and yet while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. My hope of eternal life, my hope of escaping the judgment that God has pronounced upon sin, man's sin, I escape it. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? There's no other way. So you focus upon the gospel, the good news. Who is this Christ? In John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, it says this, Many other things did Jesus in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, in his letter. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that believing you might have life in his name. Gospel, drum roll it. While you're young, develop a habit of reading the word of God. Get a little older, get involved in Bible studies. Go on a missions trip. Do some of those kinds of things that would enhance your understanding of the gospel and of the goodness of God. I'm going to give you just a couple of closing scriptures for you to ponder. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. He's talking to young people. Till I come, give attendance to reading and exhortation and doctrine. You can know the doctrines, the teachings of the scriptures. And by the way, the gospel is foundational to every other doctrine or teaching in scripture. That's why I'm saying focus upon Jesus, who he is, what he did, what his claims are. Believe them. There's great foundational for you for the rest of your life if you'll establish them while you're young. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. He's talking to a young person. Paul's writing to young Timothy. He says, you have a spiritual gift. Don't neglect it. Verse 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all, that others will look at your life and see the benefits of a person who is steadfast in the gospel truth. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in so doing thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. You will find yourself becoming established in your faith, and other people will become established in their faith, because as a young person you've made the most of this. In the work of it, as a young person, in Lamentations 3.27 it says, It's good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth while he's young. David was but a youth when he slew the giant. I can tell you this, the best time to slay some of the giants in your life is while you're young. Don't allow them to threaten, to accuse, to manipulate, intimidate. The longer in your life, the harder they are to go down. Take them down. Take the giants down when you're young. David said in Psalms 25, 7, Remember not the sins of my youth, the world seems to wink at the sins of young men. If you remember the sins of your youth with a repentant heart, God will forget them. And it'll be something that can be removed. And I can say this, there is no better way to poison your old age than with the sins of your youth. Let me say that again. There's no better way to poison your old age than with the sins of your youth. Deal with sin while you're young. Make the most of your youth, your young times. <clears throat> well, I want to keep encouraging you. Looking unto Jesus, there's an old hymn that goes like this. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Make the most of your youth looking unto Jesus. Don't waste those years. Look unto Jesus. Well, next we're going to take a look at when you're in your prime, whenever that time is. There are certain instructions when man is at his very best state. Okay, There are some cautions. There are some encouragements that you need to embrace. I, I'm beyond my prime. I've, already, I've, already, I've been young and now I'm old. I've already done the youth thing. I've already done the middle age, the prime time of my life. I can't physically, mentally do what I used to do when I was in my prime. We're going to take a look at that next week. 
And then, of course, we'll take a message and just focus in on what it means to be old age. Some of the things Joyce and I are concerned about and embracing to help us. Well, I want to pray this prayer for us all in closing. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Oh, God, help us to be looking unto Jesus. God bless you.